Hey, everybody. Welcome to Today I Learned in R 2025. I'm here with Greg Martin, and we're going to talk a little bit more about some things we learned lately in our favorite programming language. Hey, Greg, how's it going, yeah. man? Good to see you, Andrew. Always good to see you. And uh, as always, I'm looking forward to learning whatever you're going to teach me today. Um, yeah. And, uh, that said, do you, wanna, do you want me to jump in? Well, yeah, actually, jump right in if you would. I'm ready. I'm ready to learn some stuff. But, before I do, let me just say to the people that are watching this on my YouTube channel, go and check out Andrew's YouTube channel, Equitable Equations. We'll put a link in the description. Uh, I always find anything that he creates useful. So absolutely go and check that out. Uh, it's an absolute and must. absolutely likewise for Greg's R Programming 101. I'm a subscriber and thrilled with all of the content you generate. Teach us some stuff, Greg. Okay, so I'm going to just share my screen. There you go. Hopefully you can see that now. It and just came up. What I'm going to show you is a problem that I bumped into, and I'm a little surprised that I didn't bump into this before, and oh. then I'll show you a quick solution. The problem that I bumped into is that if you save a file as a CVS, you sometimes lose some of the R, the attributes of the data yeah. that you, that, that you know, like, for example, factor levels, and we're going to look at that right now. So uh, as always, tidyverse, I mean, I'm not even sure if I need the tidyverse for this, but as a matter of habit, that <laughs> yeah. goes as a, as a first line into any code that I write. I see um, some mutate there. I see glimpse. <laughs> oh, there you go. So it's necessary. Absolutely. So um, I'm, I've just created this little data set called raw, and I'll, I'll bring that in. And if we have a quick glimpse of that, you can see, you can see at the bottom over there, there's just three variables. Yeah. One of them is eye color. And you can see here that it's a character variable and there's blue green and there's probably something else we can actually have a quick look at that mm -hmm. data set right here so there's three eye colors and it's a character variable so it's not at this point a factor yeah and so it doesn't have factor levels and factor levels are useful if you're wanting to do data visualization or analysis it, it's basically the order in which uh, the categories will yeah. be looked at by r now i'm going to quickly give these give these factor level this create a factor a variable out of that eye color and give it some levels. And now if we do a glimpse, we can see, there you go, it's a factor. And if we do levels of that variable, we can see that the levels are green, mm -hmm. blue, green, brown, blue, in that order. Happy days, that's what this code does. For more information about factor levels, you can watch other videos. We can talk about that in a different time, but this just kind of puts things in an order. Now, if I were to save this as a CSV document, yeah. okay, and then, uh, and I've saved it as it's called raw two in this yep. case, like raw data two. And I'm going to read that in and ask for the levels. And you can see at the bottom here, it says null. So yep. it has lost information uh, that, that, that should be there. Right. I'm going to redo the same thing, but this time I'm going to save that, that data, that mm. data object raw data as a RDS file. And just so that, you know, RDS stands for R serialization. Oh, interesting. Our data serialization. And it preserves our specific attributes of metadata. So if we save RDS, and then I'm going to just read that in as clean data and then ask for levels, boom, shakalaka, green, mm. blue, green, brown, blue, as, as was described up here. So it said yeah. it, it, that those attributes were, were, were retained. So a nice little trick. Um, if you bump into that problem, there you go. There's a nice, easy workaround. Yeah, that's great. It's um, one of the things about it is, um, you know, I don't I don't deal with releveling factors or assigning factor levels very often. I sometimes do, of course. It comes up just often enough where I feel like I should know it backwards and forwards. I mean, one of the great things about R is that you can a lot of times just kind of ignore the difference between factors and yeah. character vectors, mm -hmm. but not always. Yeah, and, not always. You know, yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. like this to to just grease the wheels a little bit, reduce the friction um, is really great. Yeah, yeah. And having a workaround when you need it is is nice because yeah. I, th this particular pro it was driving me bonkers. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Andrew, what are you going to teach me today? Yeah. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the here package, which is one of my favorite things. I've been using it for years. So this part of it's not new. Um, here makes it easier to find your files. And if you've ever had to deal with um, relative or absolute file paths on your machine, for instance, when importing data, you know what a hassle it can be. Um, yeah. I'm going to go over to um, 
my R studio and show a little bit of my desktop here and talk yeah, through not yeah. just the here function, which I think a lot of people already know, but um, another function in that package that I learned about recently. So um, I'm in an R Studio project, which is uh, basically just a folder where I'm putting everything having to do with the specific thing I'm working on, the specific data analysis. I've just called it a proj. You see, I've got a folder there. There's a R project file in there. The uh, Quarto document that I'm working on, I've just called it report. And uh, I've got a data folder. And within that data folder is a file called scooby.xlsx. And I'd like to be in a situation where I can take this folder and uh, share it with somebody and have all of the code that I'm writing still work, even though the file structure on your machine is going to be different than the file structure on my machine. Right. So the right. here package makes that easy. As long as you're in a project, the um, here package is going to set all of your paths relative to that project. And then you can set up your relative paths using the here function. So I'll load up read Excel and here. The path that I'm going to want starts at my project, then goes into this data folder, and then within that data folder, there's scooby.xlsx. And so path is literally just going to create a string with mm -hmm. the path mm -hmm. to my file. Nice. And so now Very when nice. I read Excel, it just imports. And if That's I were to share this with you or anyone in our audience, just by sending the whole project folder to them, it'll still the work. Code will still work, regardless yeah. whether they're Mac, PC, regardless of where they put the project. That's actually super useful because yeah. I don't know if people know this, but there is a difference between Macs and PCs yes. in the way in the way that you describe the file path, which yeah. has always driven me bonkers. Yeah. So I use this in my classes when I'm teaching R, which I do on the regular. And, um, you know, I say, do a project, use the here function from the here package. Nice. But of course, when you're dealing with large numbers of students over time, things go wrong. You know, mm -hmm. um, even if even if I'm completely expert and never making any mistakes, which is not the case, um, about mistakes <laughs> for sure, um, the students are going to. And so the thing I learned recently was the here package has um, a couple other functions in it. And one that I've really started to love is doctor here. And doctor here will explain the rationale for where the here package is starting, where it's setting up its relative path. So in this case, if I just hit command enter on doctor here, it will say it's starting in my project folder. And the reason is because it has found an R project file in uh -huh. the same place as where it's starting nice. in the current working directory. So that's great. Um, this gets particularly useful when things start to go wrong a little bit. And I'll just illustrate that. I think maybe the most common mistake that I see with students is when they're doing a Quarto document, they won't put it in their project folder. They'll just save it somewhere else, you know? Ooh, interesting. And now if I were to reopen this, maybe I'll do it from the file browser. I'll just go to my desktop and open up my report. There we go. And uh, so now if I run this, and maybe I'll just leave out the doctor here for the moment, I think I'm going to get an error. There we go. And the reason is the path does not exist. Because uh -huh. when you render a Quarto file, it sets the working directory immediately as wherever the place the Quarto file is. Right. So frequently I get you know, puzzled emails from beginning students, like, why isn't this working? I use here, I've described everything right, I'm in a project. The doctor here function is going to give me some explanation. And so I'll render this. And oops, I forgot to comment out the, uh, the bad code, the error code. So now we're actually going to see this report. There we go. And you can see here is starting on the desktop. In particular, it's not finding a project folder. It's also not finding a, a specific marker that was laid down, the a here file, um, or any of the other things it might look for. For instance, it looks for a Git file if you're doing version control. And so as a result, it's just sticking with the initial working directory of desktop. And so relative to desktop, this path that I made doesn't actually take me to the file. Right. Right. So right. when things go wrong, Dr. Here gives you a good opportunity yes. to figure out why. Well, I had never come across Dr. Here until right now. So very excited about that. Thanks very much, Andrew.
It's it's brand new to me, and it's one that I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of um, with my students. Brilliant. Well, listen, thanks very much. Uh, that was brilliant. Always good to see you. Always learn a lot from you. Um, as always, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Don't ever change. Thanks, Greg. And it was great talking to you. Great learning from you as well. And uh, take care, everybody. Good seeing you. Bye-bye. Take care. All the best. Cheers.